You know, I'll tell you my yeah. issue with the with the I guess the MGTOW. Uh, I don't know much about this world because if there's anything that I stand for, it's interacting with women. Yeah. Yeah. I'm friends with women. I hang out with women. I date women. It's good. Like I, I have a, I have a sister. I have a mother. I have a girlfriend. Like I, Amber, like I, I love women. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I'd rather hang out with two or three of my boys and a ton of women. Mm -hmm. That's just me. But I feel like there's two camps in the MGTOW community. There's the camp that was like, listen, I was married, I had kids, you know, she took my shit, took all my money, and I'm fucking done with these bitches. I kind of get that. Oh, yeah. You've been burned. Mm -hmm. Okay, now maybe you're scorned, scorned lover, you know, that whole thing. I kind of get that. The other camp is, I don't get women, I hate women, they, uh, fuck women, but they've never been with a the woman, they're not like friends in, with like women, incels. they're not dating women. Mm -hmm incels they're yeah. just like it seems like victim mentality yeah. at its highest form mm -hmm. this is the, i'm like well, so what do you mean you're, you're just a 28 year old dude that hates women now like what's happening right here bro like improve your life figure it out make some money get in the gym talk to women get laid you got this buddy go and en en enroll in john anthony lifestyle you could be at 1591 no problem <laughs> so what's the what's your situation with these MGTOW? Do you understand what i'm saying these two different yeah. camps well, it, but the problem is, like I said, is a lot of them, like, they actively try a whole lot, and they give it a chance, and the years to start falling off the calendar, the decades fall off the calendar, and it becomes, like, too hard on them emotionally and psychologically. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of them just give up because they think there's no light at the end of the tunnel. So what I try to do is give them, like, a straightforward, practical, step-by-step -step system that's going to deliver results immediately. Like, let me get your girl's thoughts on this. So when a guy first comes on the program, we hook him up with a professional photographer. Mm. They get a pro photo shoot. And then we have a team of hot girls that picks the best five photos out of hundreds of photos. Oh. Smart. Then we oh. apply a face app to it. So he's going from average photos to pro photos. You, to what do you mean face app? You, like you're face tuning, tuning his face? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, we're face girls tune dude's it. face. No, but not girls in a, not in a catfishing yeah. way. We just like Hollywood 2 on face app, right? Like the most subtle. You just like smooth the skin a little yeah. bit. Yeah. It's funny. That's it what we do too. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, and then I write their bio for them. And then that starts giving them a nine-day difference in matches. So I say, I don't care like, what your dating situation is right now, how bad you are with girls, or what your results are like. We're going to put you through this process. Now you're going to have lots of mm. matches coming in. Yeah. Once you get a match, follow these scripts to get the phone number. Mm. And it, it handles all control paths. Once you get a phone number, follow these scripts to get a date. So now they went from getting a pro photo shoot to now having a lot of dates. And then I show them how to do it out in public, at bars and clubs, and during the daytime, and how to make those dates be successful. And as I said, we, we have like the coaching calls to find the bottlenecks and clear them away really fast. And so it opens a whole new world for them. And it, it brings a whole bunch of confidence into their life, which translates into their career, their family relationships, their friend relationships. Like it. It's like the cornerstone of their happiness. I tell you what, I thought the girls would be like, you're a piece of shit, 1500. <laughs> They're all like, OK, I kind of get it. If you're honest, I don't care what you do. OK, thank you, Amber. Last question <laughs> for you, John, and then I want to ask the girls some questions. Um, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, you know, this whole red flag, green flag. I don't know if it's a red flag. It's a green flag. I don't know if it's a red flag. I don't know. Kind of got a couple of red flags. I don't know this whole thing. How my product, the Leads Machine, actually works. This is going to make the process way smoother. It's going to maximize the chances of converting your matches on the online apps into phone numbers. It's going to maximize the chances of converting your phone numbers into dates straight to the house and dates in public. And it's going to teach you how to run those dates and bring the girls home successfully. And then also how to close once you're back in order to seal the deal. This Leads Machine product is very sure to multiply your results very quickly. So it's going to give you not only way more dates, but way more success on those dates and a lot more hookups uh for someone that's been with 1500 plus women what are the the biggest red flags or what are the types of women that men should avoid like so for me it's entitled high maintenance women yeah it's like i just can't do with it i don't care how hot you are well that's like, what i meant i just any can't girl, do any it. girl that says she's like too good for a coffee date like I've, I've had girls be like really coffee like i'll never go to get a coffee and it's like okay I'll find someone else to get a coffee because that's it, it shouldn't you shouldn't like base your first date on oh are we gonna get dinner are we gonna do something okay. expensive or whatever so that just takes care of itself or like any girl that's you know being like super dramatic or anything like that mm -hmm. usually that's gonna cause problems or girls are just playing games right if girls are like ignoring frequently on the messages or, or playing games like power struggles that usually just continues on on and on right so I'm looking for a girl that's like low drama cool to hang out with fun isn't a liar, has like a decent moral system, has ambitions, has interests and stuff like that. She doesn't need to be like 
this you know extreme example of like the perfect one, but just like has a bunch of cool stuff going on, and we and we have a good bond in chemistry. What is the average like from beginning to end tryst? What is the time frame? Meaning, How long I made I a girl, we hung out, it was a couple of weeks, we had a good time. All right, she's off, she has a boyfriend now, or she moved, whatever. Like, it's like meaning, like if there's fifteen hundred women, they're not. Yeah. I've been dating fifteen hundred women for ten years. No, it's like it's like one two, night stands. Give me like, some time. It's like frame. two to four months with a lot of them. So wow. like, if it if it's going good, that and some of them even last for over a year, right? So it's I just if it if it was good chemistry, good sex, et cetera, then I just like let it run its course, and if eventually they want something more serious, I tell them like I'm not looking for that right now, or I'm you know I'm too busy with work or whatever. It's their choice if they want to stay around, but typically after like two to four months, either I'll get bored on some level or they want something more serious or, you know, something else comes up in one of our lives or whatever, uh, or you have a fight and, you know, you go your separate ways there. Do you ghost? Uh, no. Mm. No ghost. By I, the way, I always tell them, you know, I always at least keep them. Of the 1590 yet. to soon to be 1591, like any minute, <laughs> how many were one night stands? What percentage? Um, it's hard to put a figure on that, but. I would I would say probably less than half. Okay, but half. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. So seven hundred plus cause I, I, women, like because it, it's you, it's one night. So most I would say a lot of them are are more than once, right? Like if it, if it was good enough the first time, then I usually want to see them again. Unless mm. unless there was like some kind of thing where it's like oh I didn't like her personality or like, you know, there's some big like deal breaker thing. Okay. Would I you say that your again. sex drive is absurdly high? Not necessarily. Really? I, mean, I, I started taking uh, testosterone replacement therapy because right, I'm, I'm 39. Yeah. Yeah. But just to get it up to optimal levels again, right? Because I all the nights like partying and being out and drinking and all that stuff. When uh, I did a test like four or five years ago, it was in like the low 300s. So I wanted to get up to like the 700 to 900 range. He's back, baby. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> let, let me let me get um, Rebecca's uh, opinion on something, and then we're gonna play a quick game. We'll wrap up. All right. Rebecca, we always hear this term: happy wife, happy life. Okay, yeah. you seem like a pretty happy wife, mm -hmm. right? We had this conversation the other day about forget about happy wife, happy life, happy king, happy kingdom. I'm like, oh, play all right, we're now. <laughs> so, in your opinion, what is the perfect balance? Happy wife, happy life, happy king, happy kingdom. How does it work in your in your household, and what is the best balance? Um, I think that I'm the only. I wouldn't say the only reason why I'm happy, but a lot of the reason why I'm happy is because. My husband is happy. Mm. It's pretty straightforward. And it, mm. I don't, it's, it, my husband, that's the thing. It's like men are very easy to please. It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't take like rocket science to figure out men and what makes them happy. Like my husband comes home, eats a hot meal, sits down, you know, decompresses. And many nights we, you know, have sex. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> like, What's going on? I was like, okay, I mean, all right. Fifteen ninety, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, what? but I think too, you know, I he makes me happy. My family makes me happy. Living in my purpose makes me happy. So, if you could only pick one, happy wife, happy life, happy king, happy kingdom, what would you pick? Happy king, happy kingdom. Wow! Because you're the queen. To, because if he's happy, trust me. Sis, um, where is my camera? Right there, right there. <laughs> Sis, right there. he's gonna make you happy. Mm. I'm just saying, like, make treat a man right, and he'll make you the happiest woman. What does Dave treat the right man right? Treat the right man. Yeah. Yeah.